some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Japan's Prime Minister Naoto Kan said Tuesday his government's in state of maximum alert over the nuclear crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. High radiation levels continue to delay efforts to fix the plant's cooling systems, and experts are now debating whether to cover its reactor buildings with a special material in order to try and stop the spread of radioactive substances. Radioactive water is seeping into the sea, and highly radioactive liquid has been found inside and outside several reactor buildings. Small amounts of plutonium have also been detected in soil at the plant. The Institute for Energy and Environmental Research has released data showing the radiation leak in Japan is far worse than the one at Three Mile Island in 1979. Researchers estimate the Japanese plant has released 160,000 times as much radioactive iodine-131 as the Three Mile Island accident. The researchers said the radiation leak in Chernobyl was 10 times larger than the leak so far in Japan. On Tuesday, Peter Lyons, the head of the U.S. Energy Department's nuclear program, said the discovery of plutonium in the soil near Japan's damaged nuclear reactors should not be a major surprise. All, uh, all operating reactors, uh, whether they start with any plutonium in the fuel or not, build up plutonium in the course of operation. So finding plutonium um, w that was derived from either the operating reactors or the spent fuel pools would not be regarded as a major surprise. Certainly it would be a concern if it were in significant, uh, significant levels. At least anything I've seen was that it's uh, not significant at this point. That was Peter Lyons, head of the U.S. Energy Department's nuclear program, speaking Tuesday at a hearing for the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee. The hearing comes as the U.S. regulator embarks on a safety review of the nation's 104 nuclear plants in the wake of the Japanese accident, the worst the world has seen in a quarter of a century. The Obama administration says it's trying to determine how to boost energy production without increasing global warming. To discuss this issue, we're joined by British journalist George Monbiot in London. He's an author, columnist with The Guardian of London. He's written in favor of nuclear energy after the Fukushima disaster. And we're joined by Helen Caldicott, world-renowned anti-nuclear advocate, author and pediatrician, co-founder of Physicians for Social Responsibility, has spent decades warning of the medical hazards of nuclear technologies. George Mambio, why don't you begin, why doesn't what is happening now in Fukushima uh, concern you when it comes to nuclear power? worldwide. Well, obviously what happened what's happening in Fukushima concerns me a lot about the area surrounding Fukushima. It's a horrible, um, dangerous, extremely traumatic uh, series of events that we are seeing there. But I'm very worried that uh, the global response to what's happening in Fukushima will be to shut down nuclear power stations around the world and to cancel future nuclear power stations, and that what will happen is that they will be replaced by coal. Now, coal is hundreds of times more dangerous than nuclear power, uh, not just because of climate change, though, of course, climate change is a big one, but also because of industrial accidents and because of the impacts of, on, of pollution on, on local people. If we just look at industrial accidents alone, these massively outweigh the, uh, both the fatalities and the injuries caused by any nuclear accident we've ever seen. In China alone, uh, last year, 2,300 people were killed in industrial accidents um, to do with coal mining. Purely by coal mining accidents, 2,300 killed. That's six people a day. That means that in one week, the official death toll from coal in China is greater than the official death toll from Chernobyl in 25 years. And that's to say nothing of the hundreds of thousands of people contracting really unpleasant lung diseases, which will cause them a very slow and painful and terrible death. So what I'm calling for here is not complacency. I think it's, it's absolutely appropriate to um, be very concerned indeed about what's happening in Fukushima. But I'm calling for perspective, and I'm saying that we must not replace a bad technology with a much, much worse one, because, unfortunately, that is what's likely to happen. 
Ellen Caldicott, your reaction. Talk about where Japan is right now with its nuclear reactors, what partial meltdown means, and what you me think this means for the future for nuclear power in the world. Well, Amy, uh, The Guardian yesterday reported that unit number two had actually melted down. The fuel had melted through the reactor vessel onto the concrete floor below. Uh, that is a problem because the zirconium in the fuel reacts with the concrete and it could form a huge hydrogen bubble like happened at Three Mile Island. There could be a huge hydrogen explosion which would rupture the containment vessel and out of Unit 2 would come huge plumes of radiation which, if the wind is blowing towards the south, could devastate much of Japan forever or it could be blown across the Pacific uh, towards uh, the American, North American continent and around the globe indeed and pollute the whole of the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and this, and, and of course, if there is such an explosion, it means that the workers who are trying to stabilize the cooling pools, one of which has been burning or several have been burning, and the other reactors, which are in a very precarious state, they'll have to evacuate the plant. I mean, they can't work there anymore. And then God knows what will happen. This is the most extreme situation in nuclear power. Could, I could never have imagined this, Amy, although I have thought a lot about um, meltdowns and Chernobyl in particular. George Mambio, your response, do you agree with Helen Caldicott's assessment? Well, I agree that it's a very parlous situation indeed. Um, it does look as if um, it's going to melt through the reactor floor effectively and onto the concrete, in which case um, exactly the scenario she's talking about could take place. I would disagree, though, that it will devastate a large part of Japan forever, which I think was a term that she used. I think that's an overstatement of the impacts of the radiation. Um, there's no question that um, it will uh, uh, cause mass evacuation. Um, it may cause health effects for some people, but we've got to be very careful about not doing what say the climate change deniers do when they um, say that um, there's no danger from climate change, um, cherry-picking studies, plucking out um, uh, work which is very much against the scientific consensus. When it comes to low-level radiation, unfortunately, environmentalists have been responsible for quite a similar approach by making what appear to be unjustifiable and excessive claims for the impact of that radiation. That is not in any way to minimize what is what could well happen as a result of the events in Fukushima. But what, what it does say is we have to um, use the best possible science um, to work out what the likely effects are to be and, and not um, engage in what could be far more devastating to the lives of people in Japan, a wild overreaction in terms of, of, of the response uh, in, in which we ask the Japanese people to engage. We're going to break and then come back to this discussion. Our guests are George Mambio of The Guardian and Helen Caldicott, world-renowned nuclear, anti-nuclear advocate, co-founder of Physicians for Social Response.